Hi folks, I know it is supper time and many of you are probably busy getting ready for your next meal, but I wanted to leave a, a daily message and reflection before I head out for uh, home as well. I've been working at the church this afternoon. There's been a lot of changes, we know, in the last few weeks and, and uh, the last few days I've been wondering in particular how young people are doing. I know that there's been a, a number of changes that they've had to make to the way that they learn, the ways that they interact with their friends, uh, spending more time at home, which for some may be good, but for others may be challenging, losing opportunities to get involved in extracurricular activities from sports to art to music to uh, guides and scouts and even uh, church life. And, and uh, so I, I wanted to, to share a message today, some thoughts on how we can uh, help um, children and young people um, through this pandemic. I, I was reading an article uh, put out by the Canadian Centre for Addiction and Mental Health and and they uh, encouraged uh, parents and, and, and grandparents to to um, make space for the children to say to share their grief to to ask questions to to share their anxieties um, just to read a, a bit of advice and counsel that they offered uh, they wrote this time may be a very challenging one for children and adolescents, some who may not understand the reasons for school closures and the cancellation of extracurricular activities. In addition, they are likely to be bombarded with information through social media and from their friends that, cause, that can cause them anxiety and even alarm. Young people may also sense the anxiety of their parents and they may worry about their own health and that of other family members and, and I'm mindful too that sometimes when kids see that they're are aware that there's heightened anxieties in the household because kids are, are so compassionate and caring they may not want to un unload or, or burden anyone with their worries and it may be a confusing time uh, the other day I spoke about how hard it is for grandparents and great aunts and great uncles to not be able to to see face to face their loved ones not be able to to reach out and, and hug their grandchild well the opposite is true for the grandchild it must be pretty hard not to be able to to go to grammy's or go to grampy's at, at uh, throughout the week of the weekend not to be able to reach out and to hug them and the CAMH tells us that we need to reassure the kids in a way that is age appropriate and, a, as a first step, you might want to consider a family meeting if you haven't done so already to, to acknowledge their fears, to, to make uh, space for them to share their fears, to explain in an age appropriate way what might happen if they get sick and why we're trying to, to protect ourselves and one another right now. You might reassure them by explaining what steps you're taking to keep them and, and yourself safe. and. You can reassure them that young children tend to only get a mild uh, form of the virus and discuss any questions that they may have. And if you don't know the answers, that's okay. You can always tell them that, you know what, that's a really good question. I don't have the answer, but I'll find out and see what I can share. Um, I'm always reminded of that African uh, proverb, it takes a village to raise a child. and and there is a network of support family and friends, uh, the healthcare society, the uh, elders in your community, leaders, and your ministers. If your child has a, a relationship with the church, I hope you know that it, uh, and I say this especially to, to my uh, congregations at St. Paul's and St. James, if your children have questions and if they have spiritual questions, Encourage them to talk to me or to talk to an elder. Let them text, let them email. I'm available for phone calls or for FaceTime if you want to do that together. 
um, we're here to, to be a spiritual support and to link you to, to whatever resources might help you and your family uh, thrive through this pandemic. And, and uh, there's resources that we might be able to, to um, help you access. And, and one of the things I wanted to talk to you specifically about today is, is how are you doing uh, sharing your faith with your child? It's, uh, I know a lot of people, it's, it's a little intimidating to share faith or to, uh, to answer some of the, the questions that kids may ask, like, why doesn't God heal us all? Why is there illness? What happens when someone dies? Or um, why can't God just make this go away? Um, there may be other questions that they ask, like I'm praying to God that I can go play with my friends or return to school and it's not happening. So you might even have questions that you're wondering, well, how do I answer those? And I, I, one of the things I, I um, wanted to share with you today is a book that perhaps you might like to read um, with your child tonight before they go to bed. Um, I thought I would read it tonight and if you want to, to fast forward to, to this time and, and share this uh, book with your children, I'd be happy to, to read it. Um, I've shared one of uh, Crystal Bowman's books before, Does God Take Naps, which I think is a fantastic book and uh, a great theology book for all ages. She has also written, Is God Always With Me? And she wrote this because she wanted to give children the security of knowing that God is always with us. God doesn't leave us ever. And uh, in the book, she, she includes different, uh, she includes a, a part, a section with different Bible verses that you can teach your child about to reassure them that God is with them, that God is, hears their prayers, that they can talk to God at any time. Um, here she writes, the Bible tells us as plain as can be that God is with you and God is with me. At school or at home, in a bus or a car, God's always with you, wherever you are. And she makes reference to Joshua 1, verse 9, the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. She also references again my favorite Psalm 139, verse 3, you see me when I travel and when I rest at home. Your child needs to know that God is with them even at home, even when they can't go to an activity or worship at church, they need to know that God is with them, no matter how old or how young they are, no matter what circumstance they might be facing. And what an encouraging verse we find in the Gospel of Matthew 28, verse 20, when the risen Jesus at his ascension said, be sure of this, I am with you always. And there's other verses that, that uh, Crystal Bowman makes reference to, but here is a story that I invite you to, to share with your child. And to be honest, I think it's a, it's a good book uh, for us all at this age. Um, at the beginning, she reminds us of the psalmist who says, the Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now, both now and forever. Psalm 121, verse 8. So here's the story. Is God always with me wherever I go? Is he with me each minute? I'd sure like to know. Can God always hear me wherever I pray? Can I talk to God any time of the day? If Caitlin's afraid, when the thunder goes boom, is God close beside her, right there in her room? Zoe looks sad when her friends say goodbye. They're at the, they're at the uh, bus, uh, the bus is leaving for camp. Zoe looks sad when her friend says goodbye. What will God do if they both start to cry? When Jack is sick with a cold or the flu, Will God make him better? What can I do? 
when Zoe needs help because she is small? Will God help her out if she gives him a call? What if I'm bad and I do not obey? Will God be upset? Will he go far away? When it's my birthday, is God there to see the big birthday cake that was made just for me? The Bible tells us, as plain as can be, that God is with you and God is with me. At school or at home, in a bus or in a car, God's always with you, wherever you are. Before you were born, God was waiting for you. This is something we, we tell, the, the, tell people at their baptism. And, and if you're baptized as an infant, you might, or a toddler, you might not remember that, which is why the minister, the congregation, your church family, and, and your parents and grandparents and, and friends all make promises to keep reminding you of, of that you are a child of God and, and do their part to help you grow in your relationship with God. And, and the story goes, before you were born, God was waiting for you. And now that you're here, God is here with you too. God knows when you eat. God watches you play. God sees you when you sleep at the end of the day. Whenever you need God, God will be there. God's happy to listen to every single prayer. You can pray any time of the day or the night, at home or away, any place is just right. God is with Caitlin and God is with you. Through thunder and rain and quiet times too. So don't be afraid because you're never alone. God is right there in your own very home. Zoe is sad that her friend went away. And some of you might be sad because you can't see your friends today. But know this, God is with them both. God is with you too, wherever you stay. God cares about you if you're sad or upset. God sends you his love. It's the best you can get. If your friend's sick in bed, God will be there. Just pray for your friend. God will answer your prayer. If you're sick or you're hurt, God hears you when you pray. God will make you feel better. God My bad. If you're sick or you're hurt, God hears when you pray. God will make you feel better, and then you can play. Riding a bike or tying your shoe, sometimes these things can be hard to do. But God's here to help you, so maybe God will send a parent who cares, or a neighbor or a friend. It makes God sad when you disobey. But God still loves you. God won't go away. Tell God you're sorry when you've been bad. God will forgive you, and then you'll be glad. God's there on your birthday and all through the year. Each day of the week, God will always be near. God helps you to learn. God helps you to grow. God shows you the way that he wants you to go. God says that he's with you each day and each night. And you believe him, because God's always right. 
You know God is with you, so put on a smile. God will be with you forever, and that's a long while. So I invite you to share this book with, with the kids, and kids may have questions as they are reading this book. Even I caught pause and thought about some questions that I might, er, that I do have, and then I probably would have had this book been around when I was a child and mum was uh, reading it. In fact, I still like to ask her a lot of hard questions just for fun, but kids ask questions. We adults, we have questions for God too. And sometimes we pray and prayers, uh, we, we wonder, does God hear our prayers? Why is God not answering my prayers the way I ask? Does that mean God's listening? Does that mean I'm not, uh, I should be doing something different? How does God deal with our prayers? Um, does God love me even if my prayer is not answered? Of course God does. God, God gives us what we need. And even when circumstances, even when we don't have a prayer answered the way we want or hope, we know that God is still with us. God, God feels our emotion. God will walk with us and, and God will help us to, to work through our anxieties, work through our sadness and our disappointments. And God is there celebrating us when, when good things happen, when, when things make us smile, when, when we are thankful for, for, for good news. And, and, uh, you know, Mr. Rogers, many of us who grew up with Mr. Rogers, we always find comfort in, in a story that his mom told him as a child when he was scared or anxious. Um, Mr. Rogers, he was a Presbyterian like uh, me. He, was, he believed in, in, he was a Christian. He believed in, in Jesus and, and tried to, to follow the teachings of Jesus. And when he saw scary things, his mom would always tell him, look for the helpers. You'll always find people who are helping. And that is true. But Mr. Rogers' mom also taught him, his grandmother too, his whole family in fact, to talk to God, to pray to God, to, to have a relationship with God. And, and there are different ways to, to talk to God. You can talk to God when you're praying. You can talk to God in, in when you're running, when you're playing outdoors, when you're taking walks, when you're baking, when you're at school, when you're doing homework, even at home. And you can talk to God when you're reading the Bible or when you're reading stories such as that or when you are, are worshiping with us uh, online. Um, there's a little, if, if you're wondering though, how do I talk to God? What can I pray for? What can I say to God? And I thought I could share with you uh, a neat prayer. It's called the Five Finger Prayer. And some of you may know this already, but I'll just go through it again. If you're wondering, well, what do I pray for? Who do I pray for? Well, your thumb is closest to your heart, is it not? You've got, and, and so when you pray to God, you can pray for those closest to you, like your family and your friends. What would you like God to, to know about your family and friends? Do you pray that, your, that God would keep your mom and dad and your family from, safe from illness? Do you pray that God would help a parent find work or that you would have more time together or that they wouldn't worry or things like that? Do you pray that they would have um, a chance to, that you would have a chance to do more things together in this time where you're not able to go out and play with your friends and things like that. Or maybe you want to pray that God would help create more opportunities for you to talk to your friends or communicate with your friends or your grandparents or so on. Now the second finger is the pointy finger. And sometimes we think, oh, that's the, you know, oh, I'm in trouble, don't be that finger. But Pointy finger is often used to give directions, to point people in the right direction. And who can you think of that tries to help point you in the right direction? Well, you could pray for teachers, 
and for teachers' assistants as they try to, to come up with creative ways for you to keep learning, even though you aren't able to go to school right now every day. You could pray for doctors, you could pray for nurses, you could pray for lab technicians, you could pray for first responders like paramedics and police officers and uh, firefighters. You could even pray for your minister to, to, help, to help you to grow in your faith. You could pray for anybody who, who teaches and, 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 and helps you grow. Maybe your music teachers, maybe your coaches. Now, of all your fingers, which one is the tallest? The middle finger. Now, who can you think might have more responsibilities? Can you think of some people that you should pray for, like our, our prime minister, our premier, our mayors, our elected government leaders, like our MLAs, like Jeff Carr and Dominic Hardy, um, our MP, Jenica Atwin, or whoever your member of parliament might be. There are, are so many leaders that we need to pray for that God would give them the, the wisdom and, and the resources to do their work. And you know who I think could use your prayers? We see them every day here in New Brunswick. We, not just Prime Minister Trudeau, but also Premier Higgs and Dr. Jennifer Russell. And then there's all these leaders behind the scenes that are working day by day to, to figure out how to keep us safe, how to help make sure we have food on our table and that we're well looked after. We should, we should pray for them, that God would, would give them what they need to care for, for us. This next finger, the ring finger, is what we often call that. When, if people get married or they have jewelry, they often put the, the, the finger on this. Some say we put the, the wedding band on this finger because it connects to the heart. But the thing about this finger here is that it has an awfully hard time standing by itself. Like I can put my thumb up and, and index finger and so on, but this ring finger, it needs help to stand tall. It needs the help of other fingers to do that. And God wants us to remember to pray for those who are in need of help. So we should pray for the sick. We should pray for the poor. We should pray for those in need. We should pray for elderly who are in, in seniors homes that can't have visitors right now. We should pray for those that are in the hospital. And last but not least, the pinky finger. The pinky finger might be the smallest, but the pinky finger is still very important. And the pinky finger is a reminder to pray for yourself. What do you want God to help you with? What do you want to say to God? Ask God. Talk to God. God is there wanting to hear from you. So on that note, let's close with a, a prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks that you want to have a relationship with us, no matter how young or old we are. We are so thankful that we can talk to you at home, at play, at school, in bed. No matter where we are, you are there and you love us and you want us to talk to you. You hear us. Lord, we pray this day that you would give our young people opportunities to learn who you are. We pray that their love for you would grow steadily as they do. We pray that you would equip their family, including their church family and friends, with wisdom and enthusiasm to teach them about you. May your peace and your love dwell not only in their homes, but also in their hearts. Amen. So rest well, friends. Tomorrow I'm going to be giving you some updates on uh, some social activities that are coming your way by Zoom. Um, and uh, we have a, a few uh, exciting activities in the work and uh, 
So we're hoping that we can resume things like sewing group and, and uh, coffee hours and breakfasts and prayer groups and the like by Zoom and other uh, forms of social media. Uh, so stay tuned and I uh, look forward to sharing those updates with you. God bless. Have a good night.